Welcome to Garden Crossings. I'm Heidi. Today we are going to take a walk through the Proven Winners Trial Garden here at Walters Gardens and just kind of give you that month by month update of how this particular bed is doing. This bed is full of all of the Proven Winner perennials. So we'll talk today about the ones that are actually in flower. So let's go ahead and take a walk through this Proven Winners Garden. We're going to start off talking about the Phlox Sunset Coral. Beautiful coral blooms. It's part of, it's a tall phlox and it's about 24 or so inches tall by about 18 to 24 inches wide and i just love the beautiful beautiful intense coral kind of a pinkish coral blooms here on these flocks and don't they look great with this back and black sedum black and black sedum is not bloom back in black <laughs> sedum is not blooming quite yet but the great foliage contrast there is simply amazing here's a sneak peek at something coming in the future this is Delasperma orchid flash. So something just to keep our eyes on, but beautiful little uh, lavender orchid color blooms, nice ground cover, that's a succulent. Up front, we have the Dolce Wildberry Heuchera, another great dark foliage plant, little bit of rosy pink undertones going on. Uh, this plant, you can see the flower sticks are kind of there, but this, flo this flowered earlier in the season, so mostly grown for its foliage. So we are in a zone 5B6A garden in West Michigan. And a lot of these plants have already bloomed and have cycled through. Others are just starting to bloom. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look. Now this garden here is not the best representation because this is kind of, it's a trial garden. So a lot of what's going on here is just really pushing the limits to these plants. So don't necessarily take what you're seeing and think that's gonna be what it's gonna look like in your garden. Because to be honest, this Valentine's Crush hibiscus is really beautiful. Even though it's looking like it's thirsty, it probably is, but it's got great, vibrant red flowers on it. Next one that kind of stands out here is the Gypsophilia. This is the Festival Star, or Baby's Breath, compact mounting habit. They're about 18 inches tall here in the garden, and this is a long blooming perennial. It's been blooming now for probably the last month or so since I've been here. There is some cone flowers that are still blooming kind of towards the end of their cycle. So they're looking a little tired and spent, uh, but these are the raspberry beret, the double form of cone flowers that Proven Winners has recently added. I think foliage is important to talk about. So here we're going to talk about the Astilbe dark side of the moon with this beautiful dark black foliage. It is done flowering now at this point in the season but you can see how that, that foliage just really is vibrant and stands out. Um, actually, let's go in there. It's one little flower remaining. So it's got nice purple blooms on it when it is in bloom. New for 2024 is the Artemisia Silver Lining. This is a nice ground cover, beautiful silver foliage. Uh, one thing I will point out from seeing this plant uh, month after month is it did get a little wild in July and it looks like that they have recently trimmed it back to get it more of a not so wild looking habit and after trimming it back it flushed out nicely and is more compact now and just more dense it was getting really loose and kind of airy feeling uh, just because it was getting so big but this is one that you can definitely trim back to keep it maintained and looking tidy in the back there there is the fuchsia is bright cone flower look at that that's some pretty impressive canopy of blooms there and you're seeing some different coloration going on based off of old blooms and newer blooms the older blooms are kind of more of a faded pink where the new blooms are a very bright vibrant pink in the background there i was going to try to go a different direction to get it but we'll do it from this angle uh, that is the agastache royal raspberry that is probably one of the longest blooming perennials in this garden a nice upright Agastache, very fragrant. The bees are loving it right now. Long blooming. Uh, this has probably been blooming sometime since in June and still going just very strong. Heliopsis look like they kind of took a little bit of a beating. We had had some rain and wind lately and it looks like they maybe have kind of taken these down a little bit. Uh, so the Heliopsis bit of honey is really a very nice plant, even though this video is not 
uh, <laughs> giving you a good picture of what it is. Um, in our gardens, this plant is about 24 inches tall, very vibrant yellow blooms, really a great plant. So something's going on here, who knows. Uh, it do actually, it does look like they have come through and trimmed because these Veronica have been trimmed. So they may have tri trimmed that bit of honey back as well a little bit. Uh, these flocks, here we have flocks backlight, beautiful, crisp, clean, white flocks. These are almost done blooming, uh, so they're getting to be a little bit on the spent look, but you definitely can get a feel of the bright, crisp, clean, white flowers of the flocks. Up front is the coral jade sedum, and this is really looking like it's in its prime right now. These are about 18 to 20 inches tall by about 24 inches wide. There's five of them here. Uh, nice foliage, and then in the fall, it's got kind of a peachy-ish, peachy pink looking flowers. Maybe a little bit different than what you think of of other sedum that have the bright pink or red blooms. Ballet slippers, rose mallow or hardy hibiscus, part of the Summerific series. Very delicate, dainty, just soft feeling blooms. White with just a kiss of pink there on the edge. I would say this plant is probably about mid-bloom right now. There's a lot of buds that still remain. Uh, so, gorgeous plant. Phlox backlight. This one is towards its end of its blooming cycle, but still a lot of color, even though I am seeing um, a lot of uh, stalks that have had blooms previously. Uh, but tall phlox, I really think they add such a great splash of color out in the garden. Drops of Jupiter. Nice chartreuse foliage, definitely an aggressive plant that kind of helps itself to its garden space. Um, here's a few flowers remaining yet, kind of a little bit of a lilac or lavender purple. In the background, that cool texture you're seeing, that is Amsonia string theory. Does that not add great texture into the garden? So in the spring, that had beautiful blue flowers, and then later on in the fall, it's gonna turn uh, an orange color, so a great two for plants. Springs, flowers, great foliage all summer, and then fall colored foliage um, later on in the season. Penicetum lemon, lemon squeeze grass, uh, chartreuse green foliage, great wispy flowers. I just love how this plant dances in the breeze. It's a great plant to add a lot of interest to that late summer garden. Uh, the purple we're seeing is a sage advice, Russian sage. Great purple spikes of color. That one's about oh, 24 to 30 inches tall. Nice purple blooms. They have it paired in here with some heliopsis. Uh, this is, I think, Tuscan sun or Tuscan gold. And you can see it's kind of getting a little bit tired here because it is end of August. Uh, opening act, ultra pink phlox. So this is actually a spring blooming phlox. It blooms in, oh, May or so here in Michigan. So everything we're seeing here on this plant now, these are all secondary or re-blooms. So, and it does not look like this one really got trimmed back at all. So this is just new growth that came on its own without needing to be retrimmed. Another hibiscus. This one, I believe, is Perfect Storm, which has kind of medium dark foliage, kind of a pinky white flower going on. Behind it, I believe, is, I think that's Berry Awesome. I can't see the tag from here, so, uh, but I'm pretty sure that one is Berry Awesome, which is one of the more original in the Summerific series. A nice dusty pink color. We've got some more grass. This is the Apache Rose Grass. It's a Panicum grass, part of the Prairie Wind series. A uh, nice upright. It's got kind of the just soft little uh, seed heads up there and nicely blowing in the breeze. Although this is not blooming, I think it's something worthy to talk about. This is the Stand By Me Clematis. And you can see all of the flower heads have now become seed pods. And even though we're not seeing the beautiful purple blooms, don't those seed pods add a lot of interest into the garden? So definitely nice that they weren't trimmed off because they are adding some pretty cool kind of silvery interest right now uh, in this space. Some cone flowers are blooming. Looks like we've got yellow, my darling, Lakota fire. 
There's a few Veronica that are blooming. So these are spring bloomers, or maybe they're salvias. Uh, spring bloomers, they were given a light trim and they've been blooming throughout the summer. So that is what's nice with salvia and Veronica is you can trim them and they will continue to reward you with flowers as the summer goes on. In the back there is cherry chocolate hibiscus. All the flowers are facing the other direction right now. So let's see if we can get you, there you go kind of a really cool flower and this is a really large flower uh, all of the rose mallow are large flowers but cherry chocolate is exceptionally large up in the front here is some heuchera some primo wild rose what do you think about that panicum totem pole is that not cool so I love the habit of this plant wide strappy uh, leaves nice dense canopy but the thing that's neat is it's very columnar, so it's tall and skinny. Some more sedum blooming. This is part of the Rock and Grow series. This is Pure Joy, a very delicate, light, soft pink color. We've got the Dolce Cherry Truffles Heuchera, and they really look good right now. Like I love how the sun, the sun is shining through that foliage, and it's really kicking off a lot of red. In the back is the Holy Grail Hibiscus, which has nice dark, dark foliage with dark red blooms. Really very beautiful plant. Next, we have the Hibiscus Evening Rose, part of the Summerific series. Deep, dark black foliage, gorgeous flowers. This plant is in its prime right now. And here we have some of the Eucomus Purple Rain, and this is just starting to open. So you can see it sends up nice little flower spikes, strappy foliage. It's a new variety. Here's something to look for in the future. Dallasperma dancing embers. Nice ground cover. We showed you one of these earlier. A uh, different variety earlier in the video. But doesn't that look great? The lilac crush hibiscus. Beautiful hibiscus with a little bit different habit. This one is more narrow and tall than some of the other varieties. And it also has a very unique color, like just a nice soft pinkish lilac color. Let's go and take a closer look. But it's got, I like the habit, it's just really unique. Making our way around, we have a few of the Echinacea double coated butter pecan that are still blooming. A lot of them look like they're kind of more spent. Although this plant looks pretty fresh here. Some more of that gypsophilia festival star. We're going to make our way around the tree and we'll look at those flocks in a minute. Sedum Superstar, it's not in bloom yet, but even before it's blooming, it's got great coloration. Go in here and take a closer look here at the hibiscus. This is all eyes on me. Nice, very compact. Prismic pink flocks. I don't know, you can't go wrong with flocks. They are just so vibrant, so gorgeous. Heliopsis, this is a new Heliopsis. This one is called Touch of Blush. It's got variegated foliage that has just a little pink on it. And then you can see the beautiful yellow flowers. Some more Agastache. This one's called Coral King. It's going to be a new variety. Little specimen. This is a new plant, but the Hibiscus Cookies and Cream. So this plant is, it is compact, but this one was recently planted, so it's kind of a little bit extra small, but nice dark foliage with crisp, clean white flowers. Agastache. Queen Nectarine. This has been blooming all summer long and continues to just really put on a show. The phlox we're seeing here blooming. This is the storm cloud, uh, not storm cloud. Hmm. Drawing a blank here. That's what happens when you're doing things from memory. Something cloud phlox. We'll put the name up. Uh, but this was blooming earlier in the season in May. And look at this is all reblooms. So that's quite a show of color for reblooming. Continuing on, we're seeing a lot of uh, Baptisia and Daylilies that bloomed earlier in the season. 
some denim and lace there, the purple. More of the Heliopsis Tuscan Gold. And I think we're about to where we began. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of beautiful things. And like I said, I did want to just kind of put a disclaimer out there that, you know, this garden, it's, it's not perfectly manicured. It's not perfectly maintained. And I think part of the, the thing about that is it really shows you, you know, not, not every garden's perfect. Not even trial gardens are perfect because I think it's important to see what a plant does at all times of the season. Um, sometimes, you know, at certain points of the season, they're looking gorgeous. At other points of the season, they're just simply looking tired. And I think us as gardeners, sometimes we feel that way too, right? Maybe we're really gung-ho in the beginning of the year and then as the season goes on, we too start to slow down a little bit. Uh, but you know, there's just, there's so much beauty in everything around us. And I think you have to look for the beauty. You have to look for the beauty in all things. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.